In this lecture, we are going to discuss the membrane potentials and the action potential of smooth muscles. In the last few lectures, uh, in the skeletal muscle sections, we discussed that basically the action potential, the action potential is a rapid wave of change in the impulse. So on the membrane, on the membrane of a, a muscle fiber or the cell, there is a rapid change in the potential due to the movement of some ions like movement of the potassium outward and mo movement of the sodium inward that, that we discussed in the uh, neurons that action potential occurs in the nerve cells that action potential occurs, occurs in the skeletal muscle cells and similarly action potential also occurs in the smooth muscle cells but the the difference there is slight difference in the membrane potential or and the action potentials that occurs in a smooth muscle cells in the smooth muscle cells we have basically this the resting membrane potential that is about minus 50 to minus 60 in the skeletal muscles this the same resting membrane potential was about minus 90 so the resting membrane potential is uh, somewhat higher than that of uh, skeletal muscles it's minus 50 to minus 60 as compared to minus 90 so it's slightly higher than that of the uh, skeletal muscles and the resting membrane potential basically of, of the smooth muscle basically depends on the activity of smooth muscles it depends whether something is going on in the smooth muscles or not whether some activity is going on or not whether some uh, contraction is acting or not but basically the the resting membrane potential which is basically present at the baseline which is normally present it gives rise to the action potential and action potentials are basically rapid change in the potential and they, that action potential basically moves along the membrane that is something which we have discussed a lot in the previous lectures but still the action potential it is a rapid wave of um, impulse that moves along the membrane from one uh, side to the other and may, sp may spread to the whole tissue and the whole organ for example the whole it may start from the brain may, st may, uh, may come through the spinal cord and reach any organ with the help of neuron similarly it may uh, come it may then depolarize this impulse may depolarize a skeletal muscles and then when the muscles generate action potential the muscles contract similarly the same waves occurs in smooth muscles but smooth muscles are mostly present in viscera like intestines urinary bladder gallbladder ureter and their waves are slightly different so one type and these action potentials these action potentials mainly occur in the visceral types in the visceral types of smooth muscles we basically uh, di discussed that there are two basic types of smooth muscle one is the multi-unit uh, smooth muscles and the other was a visceral type of smooth muscle so in the multi-unit uh, skeletal uh, smooth muscles which are normally present in the eyes and the skin these action potential does not occur the those fibers of the multi-unit smooth muscles get depolarized with the help of contact junctions and then their depolarization leads to contraction there is no wave there is no movement of the uh, ions along the membrane because th those fibers or fibers of the multi-unit smooth muscles are so much small that action potential is impossible to occur in um, those cells so action potentially occurs in the visceral type of smooth muscles in visceral type of smooth muscles which we have discussed it is normally present in the viscera like in the intestine in the gallbladder in the urinary bladder in the ureter so this action potential which normally occurs in the visceral type of smooth muscle it is still of two types one type is that of uh, one type is the spike spike type the spike type in the spike type we just get a spike a rapid action potential a rapid movement of the ions along the membrane and then rapid depolarization and rapid repolarization and it may it may take mostly or up to 10 to 50 
millisecond. That is a, a small portion of a second. So this is one type of action potential. Another type of action potential is the action potential with plateau. Action potential with plateau. So this type of action potential, in this type of action potential, here in the spike we see that for example the action pot, uh, the the membrane potential has slightly risen and here the action potential occurred when the trigger potential was reached somewhere here around minus 50 or minus 40 and then a trigger occurred but in the case of member action potential with plateau the membrane potential has raised somewhere from minus 60 towards minus 30 or minus 40 and then action potential has occurred but that action potential does not the, the muscle does not get depolarized very quickly here you see the membrane get depolarized and the membrane then get repolarized very quickly but in this case the muscles has got uh, the muscles become depolarized but they they re retain the depolarization for a long period of time and this time may be up to one second this is a very long time so there are basically two types of action potentials which occur both occur in the visceral type of smooth muscles and one of them is spike potential which occurs for a small time depolarization is rapidly followed by re uh, rep repolarization and in the action potential with plateau the depolarization occurs quickly but that depolarization is sustained for up to one second maybe less than one second or slightly more than one second but it is sustained for a long time and the importance of the action potential with plateau is that it occurs in those viscerals which are in constant phase of contraction like ureter like uterus so these, uh, this is the importance of membrane potentials with plateau. Now, how these potentials occur, how this action potential, how this rapid change in the membrane potentials of the uh, smooth muscle cells or, or fibers occur. It is mostly due to the uh, inward and outward movement of the uh, calcium ions. It is mostly due to the calcium ions. In the skeletal muscles, we had discussed that the due to the movement of sodium inward the depolarization occurs and due to the uh, movement of potassium outward the repolarization occurs that was basically the case in the neurons as well as in the skeletal muscles but more more importantly in the neurons or the nervous system in the smooth muscles the calcium is playing the main role the depolarization basically occurs with the help of the calcium and calcium is uh, basically it is basically supplied by the extracellular fluid it is more present in the extracellular fluid and it comes from the outside towards inside in the skeletal muscles we had discussed that in this in the skeletal muscles these are the myosins and these are the actins the this is the t tubule the T tubule get depolarized, um, bring the depolarization inward. Here is the membrane of the skeletal muscle fibers. This membrane get depolarized. When they get depolarized, this brings depolarization inward. With the help of this depolarization get, uh, getting inwards, this calcium is released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum of the skeletal muscle fibers. But in case of smooth muscles, most of the calcium it comes from the outside from the extracellular fluid because the sarcoplasmic reticulum of the smooth muscle cells is not very much developed it is not very much developed here you can see it has proper tubules and it is properly developed and this is something which we have discussed in previous lectures in quite detail so we are not going into detail but the difference is that the action potential the depolarization and the repolarization processes of these smooth muscles are mostly caused by the calciums, calcium channels as compared to that by sodium as compared to that by sodium in the skeletal uh, in the skeletal muscles so the depolarization here here occurs in the here occurs with the help of sodium in the skeletal muscle sodium causes depolarization the depolarization brings the 
uh, is brought inward with the help of T tubules. This depolarization then release calcium and calcium cause contraction. But here the calcium comes inward. There is no need of sodium, and not only it uh, comes from the outside, and not only it causes depolarization and repolarization, but it also causes directly causes the contraction. In the skeletal muscles, we had sodium. Sodium was causing depolarization. Depolarization was coming inward and with the help of T tubule and this T tubule was uh, releasing calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum and this calcium was then coming here and it was acting on the heads of the myosin filaments of the cross bridges of the heads of myosin filaments and then it was causing contraction. But in the case of smooth muscles, smooth muscles calcium is coming directly from outside and not only it is it depolarizing and repolarizing the uh, smooth muscle fibers but it is also causing contraction so basically the calcium in the smooth muscle it is uh, it is having dual function or two functions at one in the same time then after the action potentials we have uh, basically uh, one other type of wave there is known as slow wave rhythm slow wave rhythm Slow wave rhythm occurs in some type of the smooth muscles and those type of smooth muscles for example in the intestine those, uh, those viscera has some self excitatory process they have some self excitatory process and they have all the time their membrane potential which was constant here their membrane potential is all the time increasing and decreasing, increasing and decreasing, increasing and decreasing. This is known as the slow wave. This slow wave is not occurring due to some external factors. Here the action potentials mostly occur due to trigger by some external factors. Here the depolarization occurs due to some external factors like nervous stimula stimulation in skeletal muscle it is mostly due to nervous stimulation in smooth muscles it's mostly due to nervous or hormonal stimulation or stimulation due to stretch or some environmental changes but in the but in the case of slow wave rhythm in the case of slow wave rhythm there is no need of any external stimuli the muscle the visceral muscle in itself is having this ability intrinsic ability with the help of which its membrane potential is increasing and increasing increasing and decreasing but sometimes when it has touched the threshold then their spikes occur and action potential can occur and this occurs sometimes when there is stretch for example we eat food and when that food reaches the intestine and the wave has already the wave has reached here at this level then the food enters the intestine and then the stretch the food causes stretch of the intestine when the stretch of intestine occurs that cause more depolarization with the help of slight more depolarization peak starts to occur peak starts to occur and it leads to waves of contraction one wave occur here one wave occur here one wave occur here so basically this is this contraction is occur occurring on top of slow wave these slow waves they are basically acting as pacemaker waves pacemakers will be discussed in heart because it it's it, it in itself maintains the activity of the heart the human heart is contracting due to pacemakers there is no need of any external stimulus to the heart because heart is contracting all the time so similarly these space may maker waves or slow wave are present in some types of smooth muscles for example the intestines and they are all the time there but when some type of stretch occurs or some types of other stimulus occurs then they get more excited and more depolarization may cause action potential and which will lead to contraction and that contraction will in turn lead to the movement of food from the stomach towards anus and onwards so that's that's the importance of slow wave and that's all about the membrane potential and action potential of the smooth muscles 
another important factor with the in the contraction of the smooth muscles is that the the sarcoplasmic reticulum of the smooth muscle is not very much developed so here we have some small depressions in the cell membrane which are known as cavioli and there we have some rudimentary skeletal uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum so these cavioli they basically behaves like t tubule here we have a t tubule with the help of which depolarization came in so these t uh, cavioli acts like a uh, t tubule and then they sometimes excite the sarcoplasmic reticulum and with the help of this cyto uh, with the help of this excitation calcium may come out of the uh, these rudimentary sarcoplasmic reticulum sometimes in some type of a uh, smooth muscles but mostly this the sarcoplasmic reticulum of the smooth muscles are not well developed it's dependent upon the external extracellular calcium level so when the external calcium or the extracellular calcium level decreases the movement or the action potential of this visceral type of smooth muscle may all together decrease for example constipation may occur there will be no movement of the gut with the decreased level of the calcium this is just an example so the movement of the smooth muscles where the where they are dependent on the extracellular calcium level any type of decrease in the external extracellular calcium level will lead to decrease in the contraction process so that's all about the membrane potential and action potential let's summarize it the resting membrane potential of the smooth muscles is normally minus 50 to minus 60 as compared to minus 90 in the skeletal muscles then the action potential they mostly occur in the visceral type of smooth muscles multi unit type of smooth muscles that are normally present in the iris of the eye and the skin they they cannot generate action potential because the fibers are very small so their depolarization occur and directly contraction occurs in the visceral type of smooth muscles we have two types of action potential whenever some stimulus comes like in the form of nervous stimulation hormonal stimulation or stretch either a spike can occur a rapid depolarization followed by a rapid a rapid repolarization or there could be plateau for example in uterus or in urinary bladder or ureter where constant contraction is needed depolarization occur quickly but that depolarization is sustained for a long period of time repolarization does not occur very much quickly and then all these uh, then there is another wave known as slow wave rhythm which is known uh, which is present in some types of the viscera in slow wave rhythm there is no need of external stimulation the movement the membrane of the the potential of the membrane of those viscera they fluctuate increase and decrease by themselves there is no need of any external stimulation but if there is some external stimulation on top of this self excitatory slow wave then contraction starts to occur and all these processes are very much dependent on the calcium level as compared to the sodium so they are all dependent on calcium and the extracellular calcium level is also important in the uh, the in the amount of contraction or the number of contraction that will occur in these smooth muscles so hope you have understood this lecture thanks a lot for watching the video